So it's time to make your very first smooth blender animation and we're going to get started straight away. We've already built out the iPhone, we've already built out our lighting setup and we're going to be using it. So I'm going to press on 7 and right now we've got two telephones and we need to be certain of which one is which. So I'm going to turn this on. Let's select our camera and this is the wrong one. So we're going to select this one first, click on 7 and now we know that this is the right telephone that we should select. I'm going to turn off all the area lights right over here. I've got five of them and I'm going to select this iPhone right here and make sure that we've got everything and this is basically its own selection so as you can see we've got everything selected and it's running smoothly in our system i'm going to set this to modeling mode simply so you don't have to look at my denoising screen now i'm going to select this casing first shift s cursor to select it and i will add an empty i will add this empty right over here and i'm going to make it a plane axis I'm going to scale this up so i can see it better and then i will actually select our entire iphone right here select objects select the empty last Control p and object and now it should be parented to this empty which means that if we move this empty around we can play around we can play with our object and that is exactly what we want because now we only have to make an animation on this empty instead of on this iphone itself now naturally we want to do the same for the front side of this phone so what am i going to do i'm going to select the front phone select this we already made this collection before so we've got all the objects stored in this collection so i'm going to select this phone cursor to select it add another empty and for this one i'm going to be using the arrows simply so i can keep them separated from each other and then i will select the front phone select objects and select the arrow last, control P, object. And now if we move this arrow, we move this telephone. Now, basically what we want to do now is click on our camera view. This is what our camera looks like. We're not going to do anything with the camera right now. Basically what I want to do, let's see if this fits. So let's click on seven, G and X, and the cameras are moving through each other. That's not good. So I want to bring it right over here, G and Y, something like this. And the other one should be completely obscured like this. All right, so and right now, if I go over to the timeline, go to frame one, I can press I and it will automatically place keyframes on the rotation, the location, the scale of this specific arrow. And that is what we've got right now. But if you want to place a more refined keyframe, you can also press on K and select which one you want to have. So location, rotation, scale, do whatever you want. I'm going to press on I for now. And right now we are at the crossroads. We can either decide to go for 30 frames, which is a pretty good format for social media, but we can also decide to go for 24, 25 frames, which is also a pretty good format for social media. Uh, in this case, I would actually base it on how long it would take you to render it. Because if you are doing 30 FPS, three seconds is 90 frames, which means that it is 18 frames more than 24 FPS, for example. And in that case, if 18 frames takes you, let's say five minutes for a frame to render, which is a very long time, by the way, but if you have a slow computer, this might be your situation, then I would not recommend doing it in 30 FPS. For me, it doesn't really matter because if I make an image out of this, it's going to be very fast. It's going to be rendering at top speed. And actually in this case, I'm going to use 72 frames simply so you can all follow along because this is the format that everybody can work with. And that's why I'm going to do it as well. So 72 frames, 72 frames, which is three seconds because 72 divided by 24 is three seconds. So right now, what we want to do is scoof this over to the side. But actually before we do that, let's select our camera. Let's go over to the composition guides and let's turn on center. And now we know exactly where the center is. I'm going to press G and X and make sure that the center is exactly in the middle of this phone. Because we want to start from the middle, have them both go to the sides, and then they will have their respective place on the thirds. So I'm going to select this arrow once again, and we are at frame 72, G and X, and bring it over towards this side right over here. Press I, and then I will select our other empty, which is right over there, and I'm going to frame zero, press I and then on frame 72 I want to move it towards this side. Make sure that the spacing on the left side is approximately the same as the spacing on the right side and that will look a whole lot better. So I'm going to press I and now let's have a look at this beautiful animation. All right, it is an animation, but this is not the way that you want it to look. As a matter of fact, if you want to make it look professional, we got to go into the graph editor and that's where you're actually going to learn the juice that will turn you into a great animator. Otherwise, your animations will forever look like this. And that is not professional. And I see a lot of people making animations like this, by the way. It's not very appealing. It's not very professional looking. So we're going to change that right now. You're going to learn a bunch of stuff. So let's go over here. Let's go over to the modeling mode. Simply so we can see a little bit better what's going on. 
like this. That's our animation. It's very slow and it's not really that interesting. Now I'm going to teach you a trick. This is a beginner course guys. And I've already told you in the previous courses exactly how this works. So maybe you are a long time follower of this channel and you already know what I'm going to do. As a matter of fact, you can probably say it by heart, word for word, what I'm going to say. But I'm going to the graph editor right over here, graph editor. And I'm going to select this empty. Uh, we're going to do the front one first. So let's select the arrow. Let's go right over here, press A and dot. And now we can actually see some of these lines. Now, as you can see, it is moving on the red line and the red line is always the X axis. Why is that? Well, let's look at our Blender grid system. The red line is the X axis, as you can see. And the green line is the Y axis. The blue line is the Z axis. And that's exactly the way that it has been colored right here in the graph editor as well. So red is going to be X, green is going to be Y and blue is going to be Z. So just so you know, that is the way it works. You can also see it on our arrow. Coffee time. Now, if you want to change some settings right over here in the preferences, we can go to animation. And if you want to change the settings for your graph editor, you can do it right here. And basically what you want to have selected is this one, only show selected curve keyframes right over here. So I'm going to turn this back off. Here in the F curve, we can change the handle we can change the right handle, the left handle, and this is actually pretty cool. So you can play around with the handles right here and change the values in a very specific manner. And I kind of like that actually. So basically, if you want to have something look smooth, you want to have contrast. First it's going very fast and then it's going slow. Or first we're going very slow and then it's going very fast. And that's exactly what we want to do. Everything in cinema usually is contrast. Blue and orange, uh, black and white, green and uh, purple. All these color schemes are being used in cinema and it's very interesting to look at. But not only that, high fast pacing versus slow pacing. All of these things matter when you are following the beats of the story. Sometimes a lot happens. Sometimes there's more dialogue where the story is being developed. Sometimes there's a lot of action and explosions and helicopters. And then the next scene you are sitting in a room and you're talking very clearly about the plans that are going to be enveloping during this entire movie, all right? And that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you right here. You want to be dynamic. You want to have changes in the speed in which you operate. And that's exactly what we're going to do. First of all, the location is the only one that we are going to be using. So I'm going to close off all the rest and you can either do it like this, holding your mouse button and closing it off, or you can click this little button at the top and it will close off everything. And now all we have to do is open up our X location. So open up this keyframe. And now if we move any of this, nothing else will move. So there's no movement in the Y location, the C location or whatever, only on the X location, which we've got opened up. Now, if you want something to move fast, imagine a linear curve. So let's turn this to linear for now. I'm going to select this T linear and it's going from left to right at a very consistent pace. Now, what we actually want to do is make sure that it's going very fast in the beginning and then slows down over time. And this always looks smooth because it's coming in and slowly fading out. And that's exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to set the interpolation mode to Bessier because we get those little handles right here and those are very handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the right side of this handle. This is the entirety of the handle, by the way. So this is our keyframe and this is the handle and this is a handle. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to press G and bring it upwards. And what do you think will happen? Right here, the animation will happen very fast and it will slow down over time, giving us this very smooth look. Bam. Every time when I see something smooth, I always make this sound like This is the sound of smoothness. All right, now all we gotta do is the exact same thing for the other side. So I'm going to select this empty right over here. And now it's inverted because it's going in the other direction and it's simply going down. But actually the principles remain the same. So what we have to do is lock all of this off, go to the X location, select it, select the right handle of this one and bring it down like this. Now let's have a look. But I still believe that this animation is a bit too slow towards the end because it's like sliding forever and forever until it finally reaches a dead stop. So what we can do is drag this handle to the right and what will happen is that the animation will be over a lot quicker. And we don't necessarily need the entire 72 frames then because it's already standing still somewhere around here. But in this fashion, it looks very smooth and professional. Now, this left handle is on the 26th frame. So I'm going to take this empty right now, the arrow empty, this one, and I'm going to take this left handle and bring it to the 26th frame, like this. 
and now both of them should have approximately the same animation. So in order to make this animation look even better, we are going to incorporate a camera movement as well. And the way I'm going to do it is simply by selecting the camera, going over to the timeline. So I'm going to select that right over here. And basically what we want to have happen is that the camera finishes at frame 72, which is right over here. So I'm going to press I, and now it will place a keyframe on this very frame. And then we're going to frame zero, and I'm actually going to zoom in all the way to the eye of the iPhone. I'm actually going to show you in viewport shading. I'm going to press G, Z, Z and that will allow us to bring the camera forward because that is the axis of the normal of the camera. So that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to zoom in. You can also do it from here if you think that is funny. You know, you have the screenshot and maybe you have a very beautiful background wallpaper and you can do it from there. That's not, not a problem at all, but I'm going to do it from the eye that we've created right over here, like the dynamic island. And I'm going to bring it inwards, G, Z, Z, and make sure that it is entirely covered like this. And then I'm going to do something very risky. I'm going to press R, Z, Z, 90. And now basically the camera has rotated like this, which means that when we make the animation, the camera will move like, and that's what we're going to be doing. And now I'm going to press I, and let's see what this looks like. All right, it's moving outwards. But of course the animation of the telephone was already a whole lot quicker, so the camera didn't even notice it. We are just filming blank space for half of this animation. And we don't want to have that happen. So how are we going to fix it? We are heading into the graph editor. And right now we only have the camera selected. And if we think about this, what location are we moving on? We can see the red line right here, which is the X location, and the green line right over there. And we are actually moving on this green line. And you can see that there's actually something happening right here in the graph editor with this green line as opposed to, for example, this line right over here. So I'm going to lock everything off except for the Y location. I'm going to press A and dot, dot on the numpad, by the way. And I'm going to move this handle downwards. And as you can see, the camera will be over here at this point in time. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to bring it down something like this. And I'm going to drag this one out as well. So G and X and move it to the left side. Let's see what it does. And now the camera is already a whole lot further than before. Now, before we actually move ahead, I want to do the rotation as well, because right over here, the camera is still kind of moving upwards and we can fix that. So I'm going to open up the Y Euler rotation, which is right over here, press A, press dot. And now we have this rotation and watch what happens if I move this upwards. There you go. And this should be a whole lot faster. So I'm going to bring this out to the side as well, animate this. And as you can see, we are now getting the rotation a whole lot quicker and it's moving downwards. So the final part is because we moved it upwards towards the eye of the camera instead of towards the middle of where the camera ends. We have to do the keyframes of the Z location as well. So I'm going into the Z location, press A, press dot, and then I'm going to bring this down. Make sure this one is pretty fast. All right, so now we are already in the middle. I don't like the fact that we cannot see what is going on right here. So I will close this off once again. I will go into the Y location, A and dot, and maybe we can move this even faster and I do believe that the rotation can be a little bit faster. So I'm going to bring this up higher somewhere over here. All right, so now the rotation is done pretty quickly and we've got the camera moving outwards and that looks very slick and smooth. And that's the way that you animate these telephones. That's also the way that we animate the camera. And right over here, if you want to change something in this animation, uh, for example, you want it to move a little bit further, but you don't want to change all the keyframes. Simply go over to the object properties tab, open Delta transform. So let's click on zero, let's see what it does. Uh, we've got all our keyframes for this, right? and it's moving on the x-axis, we can see that right over here. Now let's say I want this camera to move a little bit further to the left or a little bit more to the right. We can simply use the Delta transform, which is going to take into account our keyframes. But if I move this further to the left, let's say, it still operates with the same keyframes, but now it's moving further to the left. So if you want to change anything later on in your animation, but you don't want to redo the keyframes and the graph editor stuff, no problem, use the Delta transform. And in that way you can easily make changes without having to do everything again. Now, all you have to do is render this out, go over to cycles, make sure motion blur is turned on because it always makes your animations look better. And then we are going to set this film to transparent and we can add in a white background later on in DaVinci Resolve, which you can also do is add in a plane and place it on the back side like this 
and uh, have it be a white animation background screen something like that will also work out fine for whatever purpose you are going to be making this for however in the next tutorial i'm going to show you how to make a background with geometry nodes that we can use forever and forever and forever to generate unlimited types of background that either look like cloth or very abstract things like that so make sure to stick around and i'll see you in the next video i get the money and it's right on cue keep the duffel bag up inside my coop hold a couple racks tell them i love you you want to be a boss do it like i do uh.